Yes, that's right, in today's video I will be playing through 200 days of Stardew Valley Expanded. Stardew Valley Expanded is a fan-made mod which adds in more locations, NPCs, fish, and a whole heap more to the base game. And of course, if you haven't seen the first 100 days, I'd recommend you go and see that first so you're all caught up. My goals for the next 200 days are pretty simple. Complete the community center, obtain the lucky ring while panning, max out my player skills, and finish the missing bundle. However, this next 200 days gets pretty spicy, so you might want to stick around to the end to see just how insane my luck really gets. These videos do take a long time to put together so if you do enjoy the video don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to see heaps more Stardew Valley content like this and let's get into the 200 days. I emerged on day 101 to the frosty air of winter. Back on the farm once again, I took a deep breath and I got to work. In my greenhouse, I got to watering my ancient fruit as I still don't have any iridium sprinklers for them just yet. And of course, I went and said hello to my beautiful animal friends. Aww. Sally and I rode down to Sophia on Blue Moon Vineyard as you all told me in the comments from the first 100 days that you could buy sprinklers from her. Although she doesn't sell iridium ones, this would have been great to know last time. But that age Blue Moon wine gives you plus 7 luck so I may be back for that one at some point soon. Another thing you mentioned to me in the comments from the last video was to befriend the wizard. So I took a void essence down to him where I accidentally completed a quest instead of gifting it to him. I quickly popped by Robins to get myself a calendar which will make keeping a track of birthdays a whole lot easier. I rode Sally back to the Cinder Sap Forest and handed Rasmodius another Void Essence. Turns out it was his birthday today, so that's even better. Outside, I found him working some of his magic, where he was fortifying the boundaries around the valley to protect us all from monsters. So, uh, hey, thanks for that. That night, Sally and I headed down to the final night of the night market, where I took the submarine down to the ocean floor and finally caught myself a blobfish. I headed back to the farm, where I set up three stone chests in the kitchen to hold all of my fish that I end up catching. Because Expanded adds in so much more content, I am going to turn into quite the hoarder over the next 200 days. I finally went to sleep and my first day back on the farm was over. It was day 102 and it was time to complete Willy's Juicy Bugs Wanted Special Quest. I collected up a batch of oak resin and took the mine carts up to the mines. I popped on some of that new Calvin Klein monster musk smell and got to work. Lucky for me, floor 21 was an infested floor, and with monster musk increasing monster spawn rate, this quest was gonna be a breeze. By the early morning, I had gathered enough bug meat, so down to the beach I went where I shoved it all into a bin. After doing some foraging on the beach and sorting my full inventory back into my chests, I spent the rest of the day fishing on the pier. I dumped the fish I had caught into my chest that night and I I headed to bed. Day 103 was Marlin's birthday. I whipped up a fresh brew of life elixir and I headed up to the Adventurers Guild. I found Marlin standing on a small pier watching the snowfall, and I handed him the life elixir. And then he told me Pierre had shown him the pumpkin juice I had sold to him. Now that's a cool piece of dialogue. Over at the museum, I paid our old mate Gunther a visit and donated a rusty spoon before heading down to the wizard and handing him another gift. I mean, hey, you guys told me to befriend the wizard, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I rode Sally to the secret woods where I chopped some stumps down for hardwood, and back on the farm, I started clearing the way up to this old looking shed. However, my steel pickaxe just isn't quite strong enough to break this meteor in the way, so it looks like I'll have to come back with a stronger pickaxe. For the rest of the night, I kinda just stared airily out across my farm before calling it a night. I started day 104 handing Evelyn a beautiful diamond for her birthday today because she deserves it. I mean I can't even imagine having to put up with George so yeah she really deserves this. While I was in town I popped by Clint's where he asked me to collect 20 iridium ore and 20 coal to make that bomb he mentioned at the end of the first 100 days as he wanted to clear away to the summit. I put my pickaxe in for a gold upgrade while I was there and headed past Robins where I commissioned a second pond to be built on my farm. Back home, I was looking at what I still needed to collect to complete the community center. So I quickly went over to Pierre's to get some cooking stuff, and back in my kitchen I whipped up a fried egg and a maki roll. Down at Marnie's, I bought myself some hay, 10 I'll keep for the community center and the rest I'll shove into my silo. I then visited the community center and handed over my items before fishing in the river for a while. After such a hectic morning, this is nice. So nice, in fact, I stayed there until it got late. Day 105, I started my day riding Sally down to the traveling cart. I was on the lookout for more batteries since my lightning rods had proven themselves useless in the last 100 days. 
but unfortunately she wasn't selling any today. Disappointed, I headed back home where I fixed up some paths and kind of aimlessly rode Sally around the farm. That afternoon though, things got a lot more exciting when I found Marlon on his little pier who said he wanted to show me something. We headed into town where he unlocked the sewers and we headed on down. This is when I met a shy looking shadow person named Krobus, and I swore not to tell another living soul in the valley about him. Afterwards, Marlon handed me a key to the sewer, so hey, that's a bonus. So of course I went to see what rare goods Krobus had for sale. I purchased myself a recipe for void salmon sushi and another star drop. It was also at this point that I remembered Krobus sells iridium sprinklers. Albeit it was one every Friday, but hey that was still way better than what I had now which was nothing. So as I left I swore to Krobus I'd be back next Friday. Back on the farm I put some iridium ore I had into my furnaces and headed up to the mountain lake where I fished away the rest of the day. Before bed that night though I caught myself a sturgeon which I then chucked into one of my fishing ponds. This is because their row, when put into preserve jars, produces caviar. And look, I even made a little sign for them. Day 106, my winter seeds had once again produced a full field of forageables. I went along gathering them all up, turned them back into seeds, planted what I could, and shipped the excess off for some extra cash. With my three iridium bars smelted, I had just enough materials to craft three iridium sprinklers, which I placed in the greenhouse. Sally and I then rode through town and on over to Clint's where I picked up my gold pickaxe and swapped it out for a gold axe upgrade. Heading back home I passed by the special quest board again where I accepted Gus's famous omelette quest which tasked me to collect and hand over two dozen eggs. With my new and improved gold pickaxe I got to breaking that meteor and once I did I headed inside. I won't lie it's looking a bit worse for wear at the moment but I'm sure I'll have it back to working standards in no time at all. I then decided to hit up the mines and I headed down to level 100 as I wanted to catch myself a lava eel. And okay, I'll level with you. This is only because I wanted to breed them in my second pond back in the farm as they turned the water red and it looks cool. But do you think I could catch one? No, of course I couldn't. I honestly just ended up filling my pockets full of trash. So much so that I gave up and I just decided to head back home. I did manage to put down one more iridium sprinkler into my greenhouse though so it wasn't all too bad I guess. And since it was getting late I decided to head to bed. Overnight I hit level 10 foraging and opted to go with the lumberjack perk which gives you a chance to get hardwood when chopping down regular trees. It was day 107 and Leah's birthday. But before I could go and see her I wanted to get my third and final pond for the farm. So I waited outside in the freezing cold. I love waiting waiting for shops to open. I got inside and suddenly realized it was a Tuesday, meaning Robin wouldn't be working today. But if you pull a fast one, you can still purchase things as she walks past the counter. So I caught her just in time and commissioned the final pond. Back on the farm, I gathered up some maple syrup and artisanal items before heading out once again to the saloon. And this was to get a salad for Leah's birthday. I went back to collecting trash on floor 100 in the mines, trying once again to catch a damn lava eel. But I managed to catch one and I could not be more relieved. With some time still left in the day, I passed by the saloon again to hand Leah her birthday gift, and back on the farm I dropped my lava eel into the second pond. I even made a little sign for them. Day 108, the snow was coming down, and it was the perfect day to hand the wizard another gift. Over in town, I was back at Clint's picking up my newly upgraded gold axe, and upgrading my hoe to steel. I then took the minecart over to the quarry for the first time, where I ventured through the quarry mine. Fighting through hordes of slimes and flying skulls, I finally made it to the statue in one piece where I acquired the golden scythe. For the rest of the day I put my shiny new axe to use chopping trees and collecting wood before bed. Day 109 was Christmas Day, I mean Feast of the Winter Star. But before that I had received a letter from the wizard who proposed he'd teach me some basic magic. Visit me in my chambers at your earliest convenience, he says. <whistles> no, not like that, get your heads out of the gutter thank you. My sturgeon was feeling a little materialistic as he asked for a diamond, so I obliged. Just before heading off to the feast, I grabbed some goat cheese as my person this year was Robin. Over in town, I joined the festivities, handed Robin her gift, and found out my gift giver was George, who gave me... A blackberry cobbler. Okay, I'll be honest, that's not the worst gift I've ever received. And before I knew it, it was already late, so off to bed I went. Robin visited me the morning of day 110 since she had noticed the abandoned shed on my farm. I followed her to the shed where she did an analysis on its structural integrity. 
Sounds fancy. She told me to visit her shop so we could go over the details. Being a Friday and just like I promised, I paid Grobus a visit in the sewer to purchase an iridium sprinkler before heading on over to Clint's. I picked up my steel hoe and handed him a gold bar since it was his birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy- I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. I passed by Robin's shop who laid out the plans for restoring the shed and- Okay look, 600 stone? No worries. 150 pieces of hardwood? That's doable. 50 iron bars? Piece of cake. But 20 batteries? Are you kidding me? I'll just have to hope that my second year in the valley treats me a little better with lightning storms. Ironically though, down at the traveling cart she was selling five more batteries, so maybe I spoke a bit too soon. I was however on my way to hand the wizard another gift. However, before that could happen, I was made to drink another elixir, which actually tasted quite nice this time. I was taught the ancient ways of changing one's appearance, which naturally I mastered on the first go. I handed Rasmodius his gift and headed on back to the farm. That afternoon I spent decorating the greenhouse, mooching around the farm with Sally, and saying hello to my animal friends before Bed. I started day 111 with a trip to Blue Moon Vineyard, where I handed Sophia a big old pumpkin for her birthday. Back on the farm, I cleared the remaining debris from around the shed, dropped 600 stone into the chest, and decided to clear some more debris from where the greenhouse used to be. I shoved some iron into my furnaces before heading to the secret woods to collect hardwood. Apart from the batteries, I was pretty close to having enough hardwood and iron to fix the shed, and that night, I dropped 50 iron into the chest and headed to bed. Day 112 was the final day of winter. I did some chores around the farm, smelting ores, petting my animals, and handing my lava eel three fire quartz. Then I was back to the secret woods for more hardwood. Afterwards, I rode Sally into town and bought some more grass starter from Pierre's before paying a visit to my old friend the wizard to, you guessed it, hand him another gift. I did pass by the traveling cart who, to no surprise, was selling nothing good, and then I dropped off my void essence to the wizard. For the rest of the evening, I worked on my pathway up to the farm totem, after which adding some paths and grass was looking quite nice. I headed to bed ready to commence my second year in the valley. It was day 113 and the first day of my second year in the valley. A new guy named Kent popped by to introduce himself, and after that brief conversation I got to scything down my now dead plants. I started to do some big brain calculations while standing in the middle of my fields figuring out what I wanted to grow this season, and then I took off into town. I found Mayor Lewis packing a sad about this old patch of land with nothing to do with it. So of course I offered to make good use of it at some point in the near future. Over at Pierre's I bought a whole bunch of seeds and headed back to the farm. Now you may be thinking, Poxiel, why do you have so many different seeds? Well I'll tell you. Over the coming seasons I'm going to be using my crop fields to grow as many different crops as I can. Some will be great for gifting, some will be great for cooking recipes, all of them I'll need for the shipping collection, and because I'm not too sure what else the expanded mod adds, I'm just going to cover my bases just in case. After planting all of my seeds I was thrilled to see my rare seed had finally grown, so I took it straight to the secret woods, made it through the maze this time, and handed it over to the old master cannoli statue, who in return gave me another star drop. For the rest of the day I kind of just bummed around the farm and gave the wizard another gift. Before bed I took a late night ride to the special quest board and picked up the biome balance quest which tasked me to catch 20 lake fish and then I headed to bed. The rain was pouring down on day 114 and despite the lack of thunder I was excited to see my first harvest of ancient fruit was ready to be picked. I spent a few hours putting them all through seed makers and filled up more of the greenhouse once they were done. Sally and I rode down to the wizard once again who rejected my void essence because I had given him too many gifts. To be fair, he probably has a whole pile of void essences by now, so maybe it's a good thing. And then I headed to the quarry where I spent a while clearing it out. After a hard night's work clearing rocks, I went to bed and dreamed about how awesome I am. Day 115, Sally and I rode into town. We passed Morris, still giving out coupons I see, and headed on over to Gus's. However, I forgot he doesn't open till 12, so in the meantime I thought it would be the perfect time to make some kegs. The reason I cleared out the quarry yesterday was for the simple fact that it was going to be where my kegs are. Since it worked so well in the last 100 day series, I thought, why not do it again? 
I collected up my kegs on the farm and started placing them in the quarry. After a while, I had a good start on my keg area. Back over at the saloon, Gus had finally opened the door, so I placed two dozen eggs in his fridge, completing the famous omelet special quest. Sticking in town, I headed over to the small farmable patch Lewis had shown me a few days ago and decided to clear it out. I'm not too sure what I'll grow here, but I'm sure I'll find a use for it at some point. And I didn't do too much that night. So on to day 116, where the rain was pouring and I was once again crossing my fingers, hoping Zeus would bless me with some lightning. My apple tree had finally sprouted three glorious apples, so I picked them, collected some oak resin and maple syrup, and headed straight to the community centre where I dropped off my three apples. Being a good luck day, I thought a good use of my time would be spent in the Skull Caverns hunting for iridium and any other goodies I could get my hands on. So that's exactly where I went. After a day in the caverns, I headed home, dumped what I had collected back into my chests, and suddenly remembered it was Kent's birthday today. I hurriedly rushed over to his house hoping he was still up, and thank goodness he was. So I gave him a rabbit's foot and headed home to bed. Day 117, I started my day picking my parsnips and garlic. I then dumped them into a chest I had prepared earlier. Sally and I rode into town where we stopped by Piers to get some more seeds to replace the ones I had just harvested, and over at the museum I donated a couple of bones I had found yesterday while scavenging the caverns. Back on the farm I planted my new seeds and decided now's a better time than any to finish that biome balance special quest I had picked up a few days ago. So I got cozy on the mountain lake and cast out my line for the afternoon. It wasn't until later that night I had fished up 20 lake fish. So I headed home, dumped my catches into my fish hoarding chests, and worked on pathways around the crop area until bed. Day 118, I wasn't ready to part ways with my unfinished pathways, so I worked on that for a little bit. Once it was done, I took off to Robin's and commissioned myself a slime hutch, which I ended up placing where my greenhouse used to be. I did intend for that area to be for my obelisks when I eventually get them, but I was running out of room on the farm for a big structure, so I think I made the right decision. That afternoon, Sally and I rode on over to the West Bridge to do some fishing, and I caught myself a couple of new fish, including the butterfish and the puppy fish. It did start getting dark though, so I headed home and I called it an early night. It was day 119 and I had a field of crops waiting for me, so I picked my tulips, scythed the kale, and harvested the potatoes before dumping them into my spring crops chest. Ron had finally produced a truffle for me too, which was another item I could take off for the community center. I rode Sally into town where I gave Lewis a lovely daffodil for his birthday, handed in my truffle to the community center which completed the chef's bundle, and popped into Pierre's to buy some more seeds. Back on the farm I planted my seeds and decided to spend the rest of the day chopping trees for wood, so that's exactly what I did. Marlon braved the rain and paid me a visit the morning of day 120. Since my slime hutch had finally finished construction, Marlon gave me a green slime egg to help me get started. What a nice guy. And with a new week comes a fresh pair of special quests. So I headed over to the board and picked up Linus's community cleanup quest, which tasked me to collect 20 pieces of trash while fishing. But I put that on hold for now and decided to spend the day diving through the mines collecting resources, since I was running a little low on copper and stone. Back on the farm that night though, I had noticed it had been thundering today. And I had two charged lightning rods. Not great, but you know, it's better than nothing. Day 121, my sturgeons were once again asking for my support, more specifically to maple syrup, so I happily obliged and handed them what they wanted. A week prior, I had put out a single ancient fruit into a keg to make some wine for the community center, and it was finally done. Speaking of ancient fruit, my second harvest was waiting for me in the greenhouse. Sally and I rode into town where I dropped off the wine and completed the enchanter's bundle before dumping my ancient fruit into my kegs up at the quarry. You know, I could have turned them into more seeds, but my wallet was looking a bit sad, and I wanted some gold, dammit. I then spent my afternoon filling my pockets with trash, purposefully this time, down in the mines for Linus's special quest. And that evening, I dumped it all into the bin, which completed the quest, and I headed to bed. For the third day in a row, the rain was pouring down again on day 122. I collected up some batteries from my lightning rods, and pray Zeus, because it was another thunderstorm. So you know what? I'm not too mad it's raining again. Today was also Vincent's birthday, so I bought him a delicious pink cake. Down at the beach, I found Willy fishing with that bug meat I had caught, and I don't mean to be rude, but what the f*** <coughs> is that? Thanks, Willie. I'm never gonna get that image out of my head. After foraging on the beach, I set up shop on the pier and just fished the day away. 
Day one, two, three, the sun was shining again and my lightning rods had finally proved themselves useful. Look at all of those batteries. Now that I finally had all the hard wooden batteries, I headed on over to the shed and put them in the chest, meaning Robin now had everything to fix the shed up. Up at the mountain lake, I found Linus getting all natural in the lake. <whistles> And I popped into Robin's where I purchased myself a couple more crafting recipes. Down in the Cindersap forest, I found Willie coming back from a fishing trip, who showed me a King Salmon head caught. Maybe I'll have to try and catch one for myself. I was, however, on my way to give the wizard another void essence and to add to his ever-growing collection, which I'm sure he appreciates, right? I then wandered into the forest east of the wizard's tower and found myself venturing up a hidden pathway. At the end of was a single maple syrup and a cave. So instinctively, I headed into the secret woods where I found a bear absolutely gushing over my maple syrup, who then said to come and visit him at his cave. Now I have a bad feeling I stole this bear's maple syrup and then gave it back to him. Am, am I a bad person? However, back at the cave, I found the bear who was selling some pretty cool stuff and a couple of new cooking recipes. However, being a bit low on funds, I thought I'd come back another time. And after a long day, I headed home and I went to sleep. Robin paid a visit to the farm the morning of day 124 to let me know the shed will be refurbished by tomorrow, which is very exciting. Hey, you like jazz? Cause my blue jazz flowers were ready to be picked. I gathered them up and dumped the few into my crop chest. Up at Robin's, I bought my first out of four barns I planned to have in my second animal area, as I'm going to fill it with pigs and start a truffle oil empire. Back on the farm, I planted a mahogany tree by the greenhouse and surrounded it with grass. You know, just for a bit of pizzazz. That evening, I passed by Krobus in the sewer to get my weekly iridium sprinkler, which I placed down in my greenhouse. For the rest of the day, I faffed around collecting hardwood and riding Sally around the farm before heading to bed. Day 125 was the egg festival. I picked a whole bunch of crops that were ready for harvest, did some quick calculations about how many strawberries I could afford, and headed into town. I stopped by Pierre's stall and got my seeds, then started up the egg hunt. I made today the second year in a row, smashing everybody at the egg hunt yet again. Take that, Abigail. It was day 126, and I started my day heading straight to the shed to see Robin's work, and my, 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 this is looking very nice. I headed upstairs and found a whole patch of tillable land, meaning that I could expand my ancient fruit collection up to the shed at some point. Down by the wizard's tower, Rasmodius decided to let out some emotions and come clean about his toxic ex, and also mention Caroline. Is that why Abigail has purple hair? Anyway, today is also Haley's birthday, so I found her by the fountain and gave her a cookie. Back on the farm, I worked on some pathways up to the shed since it was now restored and added some fences and torches for a little bit of detail. With not much else to do, I just headed to bed early. Day 127, I spent the day fulfilling some quests in my journal that I had kind of neglected. Better late than never. And later in the afternoon, I handed Olivia a pink cake for her birthday. That evening, my ancient fruit wine was ready in the quarry, so I went along and collected it up. And since I had my shed up and running now, I had a change of heart and decided my main keg area will be in the shed, since the bottom floor was perfect for it. So I gathered up my kegs and headed back to the farm. My lover eels were requesting another item and this should be pretty easy. Hold on. You want a dwarf scroll? Man, you really are picky. I headed to bed and decided I'd sort my kegs tomorrow. Day 128, I started my day picking my ancient fruit, petting my animal friends, and laying out my kegs. Nah, that doesn't look quite right. Okay, that's much better. It wasn't entirely filled up, but it was looking pretty good for now. So I dumped my ancient fruit into the kegs and found Robin on my doorstep. Now that the shed was refurbished, Robin was offering to build a bridge over to it for only 900 stone. Man, these things aren't cheap. With last night's injection of gold from my ancient fruit wine, I headed to Clint's to splash some cash and get myself a steel watering can upgrade. That evening, I was in and out of the shed figuring out how many kegs I would need to fill up the bottom floor and smelting ores, which honestly took me all the way till bedtime. I started day one 129 with some farm chores before adding 30 more kegs to the shed. Sally and I rode into town where I picked up Emily's rock rejuvenation quest, which tasked me to get Emily a jade, ruby, topaz, emerald, amethyst, and diamond. So I did exactly that, handed Emily everything, and then realized the amethyst just completed a separate quest. Okay, not a lot of things piss me off in Stardew Valley, but this is one of them. So once I had returned and handed Emily her second amethyst, I headed on over to the wizard to give him, you guessed it, a void essence. But I was feeling sad for the wizard, he seems like a lonely fella. So in solidarity, I used the Shrine of Illusions and I turned my hair purple. Aww. Which doesn't look too bad in my humble opinion. 
I raced up to Robin's before it got too late and commissioned my second barn which I placed in my pig area. With not much left to do I called it in for an early night. Day 130 was Pam's birthday. I collected up some oak resin and waited patiently in the pouring rain to hand her a parsnip. I then spent a while diving through the mines collecting resources and stone mainly for that small bridge. But I got bored and decided to head back home. I picked some green beans that had grown, scythed away at some grass to get some hay and I headed to bed. My cauliflower was ready to be picked on day 131 so I picked them all and dumped them into my crop chest. After doing some chores and visiting the travelling cart who by the way was selling garbage, I rode Sally on over to Clint's where I picked up my steel watering can and I opened some geodes I had been holding on to. I passed by Gunther to donate any new minerals I had found and repeated the process since I ran out of inventory space. That afternoon I did some foraging on the beach and passed by Blue Moon Vineyard where I found Sophia being consoled by her friend Scarlet who was visiting from town. I was heading on over to the Cindersat Forest where I was trying my hardest to catch a king salmon, but I'll be honest I wasn't too sure if I was fishing in the right spot. I may not have caught a king salmon today but I did haul up a dino egg and I, you know, I wasn't too mad about that. Unsuccessful though I headed back home and I put my dino egg in my incubator and I called it a night. Day 132 was a good luck day so I decided what a perfect day to hit the skull caverns again and get some iridium. I blew most of my money on bombs and headed to the desert. I spent the whole day carpet bombing level after level collecting as much iridium as I could and near the end of my run I managed to get a whole prismatic shard. I then passed out at 2am with 68 iridium ore and I was pretty happy with my efforts. I started day 133 picking my strawberries, definitely a lot less action packed than yesterday. But that is what makes Stardew so fun, you know? My sturgeons were after some omni geodes so I chucked in three and they seemed to like that. I took the bus back out to the desert, however this time I ran my prismatic shard down to the bottom of the map and I stood in the middle of these three obelisks with my prismatic shard high above my head. My screen went all sparkly and I was granted the galaxy sword, one of the best weapons in the game. Back in the valley I found Rasmodius tending to his crops and I handed him another gift. I'll be honest not too much happened for the rest of the day but I did find my duck Roger swimming in the river and I think that's adorable. Day 134 was a nothing day spent on the farm, doing chores, smelting ores, and I finally filled the shed up with the remaining kegs, and uh, yeah, that's about it honestly. Oh, I did stay up to collect my ancient fruit wine which I dumped into my shipping bin before heading to bed. It was a Tuesday on day 135, so naturally I had another ancient fruit harvest waiting for me in my greenhouse. So I passed by the shed and dumped my ancient fruit into kegs before heading off to Fairhaven Farm. For you see it was Andy's birthday today, and I heard through the grapevine, definitely not through the wiki, that he was a big fan of Blackberry Cobbler. I'm sure George won't mind right? For the rest of the day I dove down into the mines resetting level 20 to farm for copper, stone and any other goodies I could get my hands on. Overnight though Ron the pig gave birth. Not sure how that works since Ron is a single parent but anyway I decided to name the baby Don because of course I did. Day 136 was the day of the flower dance, so I ventured down into the cinder sap forest and headed to the dance. I then popped by Pierre's stall and got myself a rare crow and the tub of flowers crafting recipe. I wasn't too sure how many hearts I had with people so I asked Haley and well... I don't know why I bother really. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would- On to day 137 and my last strawberry harvest was ready for me, so I went along picking them all, collected some green beans, put some in my crop chest, and shipped the rest off. I paid Robin a visit and asked her to commission a third barn in my pig area before heading up the mines once again to farm for resources. I also managed to complete the slime monster slayer goal. So later that night I popped by the adventurers guild where Marlin saw my galaxy sword and offered to sell me other galaxy weapons and I picked up the slime charmer ring from Gil. On the way home I passed by the special quest board and picked up Pam's quest to keg a few potatoes and make potato juice. Which sounds disgusting by the way but uh, who knows maybe that's just me. So before bed I dropped a few potatoes into my kegs and called in a night. Day 138 I finally had my hands on 900 stone. So I rode Sally up to Robin's and put it into her chest just as she requested. I dropped off another void essence to the wizard and while riding through town I found Andy having a screaming match with himself really. I felt a little bad for Lewis I won't lie. I continued my gift giving up to Marlin by handing him a green slime egg which he actually liked. 
I checked up on Andy, just like I promised Mayor Lewis I'd do, and he kind of gave me the cold shoulder. Later that night, I had completely forgotten about Pierre's birthday, so I ran over a rabbit's foot where I waited for him, and gave it to him just in time. Exhausted from all of today's social interactions, I decided to get some sleep. Robin came out to the farm the morning of day 139 despite the rain. She told me she had received the stone and that the bridge would be up by tomorrow. Now isn't that just great news? Sally and I rode down to Marnie's so I could buy some auto grabbers. Trust me, I love my animal friends, but I'm sick of collecting their products every single day. After placing down my auto grabbers, I headed on over to Pierre's where I bought a whole bunch of parsnip seeds. These are so when it rolls over into summer, I won't have to worry about hoeing and watering my crop area. Yeah, I'm pretty smart like that. Anyway, I was heading to give a birthday gift to Emily and found a rock rejuvenation class going on, so I thought I'd wait. And then I waited ever so patiently to hand Emily a ruby for her birthday. Back on the farm, I planted all the parsnips before heading up the secret woods for some hardwood. Seeing it was getting late though, I decided to hit the hay. The sun was beaming down on day 140, the final day of spring. The traveling cart disappointed me once again, so I headed back to the farm to check out my new bridge, and it was looking very nice. I then spent a while in the mines looking for resources, but I think I must have had a bad luck day because it wasn't looking too good. So I bailed early and decided to hand the wizard his 400th void essence, who was almost at full hearts by the way, so it seems to be working. As the sun set on the final day of spring, I was looking forward to what lay ahead, but I don't think I was quite prepared for how insane this was gonna get. Day 141 was the first day of summer, and I got right to scything down my now dead crops. Riding into town, I saw a bird go head first into a window, but luckily Emily was there to take care of it. Over at Pierre's, I bought a whole bunch of seeds to take back and plant, which is exactly what I did. Also to note, I could finally plant wheat and red cabbage seeds, which were the last two crops I needed to complete the community center. So it's safe to say I was pretty excited. For the rest of the day, I slapped on some of that intoxicating monster musk smell and headed back into the mines. This this was so I could knock off some more void spirits towards the monster slayer goal. Before bed I popped by the shed and gathered up my ancient fruit wine and potato juice, shipped away the wine with some other artisan goods and headed to sleep. My ancient fruit patch was looking quite healthy the morning of day 142 so I got to picking. And because I like having money, instead of turning them into seeds and filling up the rest of the greenhouse like a normal person, I shoved them all into kegs, like the impatient man I am. Over in town I passed by Pam's trailer where I put the potato juice into her fridge, completing the special quest. And speaking of special quests, I picked up another one from Olivia, who planned on hosting a prestigious reception in the town square. This tasked me to provide 10 starfruit wine, 10 cheese, and 10 goat cheese. So back on the farm, I gathered 10 of each cheese and headed back to Olivia's house and down to her basement, which is actually a bar. <laughs> See, I told you they were fancy. And that just left me to get 10 starfruit wine by the end of the season. Wasting no time at all, I rode the bus out to the desert where I acquired 64 starfruit seeds and headed on back to the valley. I gathered up what I needed and headed on over to the patch of farmland in the town and spent the rest of the day setting up and planting my starfruit. Day 143, I was right back out to my starfruit to add some paths and make it look pretty. Right, now that's done, let's hope I don't forget about it. That afternoon, I blessed the wizard with another void essence, which puts him at max hearts. And then I found him on a summoning circle surrounded by Junimos. Seeming quite flustered, he asked me to send them back to their home, and just like that, they were gone. I promised to keep his little secret just between us. After dealing with that, I raced up to Robin's just before she closed to build my fourth and final barn for my pig area. And then I have to upgrade every barn twice. Oh man, this is gonna take some time, isn't it? I merged around the farm for a while before calling it in for the night. It was Jazz's birthday on day 144, so I I cooked up a plum pudding and went out to find her. It did take me a lot longer than I'd like to admit, but I finally found her watching animals on the ranch. I made my way over to my patch of starfruit to admire it, I guess? Poxio, what the hell are you doing? I then decided to fish the rest of the day away. Day 145, my sturgeons were being a little bit more reasonable and asked for a nautilus shell, which I happily handed on over to them. I still can't find that damn dwarf skull three though. I then popped into town to see Gunther and donated an amphibian fossil to the museum before heading back home and collecting my wheat. After dropping tin off to the community center and completing the fodder bundle, I only had one thing left, and that was of course, 
The damn red cabbage. I stuck around and waited for Gus to open the saloon so I could stock up on salads as I hadn't really had any real source of energy and they're good to have just in case. I planted some replacement wheat back on the farm and decided to spend the rest of the day chopping trees and stocking up on wood. My patch of hot peppers were ready for harvest the morning of day 146 so I picked them and dumped them into my summer crops chest. Today was Martin's birthday and so I parked my horse up, sneakily got myself an ice cream and caught Martin on his way to work to hand him a birthday gift. I then no joke spent the whole day gathering wood. Hey man I need a lot of it so it was worth it trust me. On day 147 my radishes were ready for harvest so I picked them all and dumped them into my crops chest for safekeeping. Sally and I visited the traveling cart and although I was tempted by this iridium bar I decided against it because it was 4,000 gold. Oh my god. Inflation am I right? I did a quick ride by my star fruit to make sure nothing bad had happened to them and I paid a visit to Pierre to buy some replacement seeds. Back on the farm I planted down some poppy seeds and for the rest of the night I swung my axe around again committing more acts of deforestation before heading to sleep. Day 148 I saw I had quite the egg collection so I thought it would be useful to make a couple more mayo machines which I placed down in my machine area. Over in town I waited very patiently for the saloon to open so I could surprise Gus with a birthday gift but I found him walking back from Pierre's so that works too I guess. While I was there I picked up another special quest from Susan who wants me to make some homemade fertilizer. Not store bought though, oh no no no, I had to make it myself. Before I could get started on that though, I paid Robin a visit and commissioned a shed to be built. This is where I planned to put my jade crystallariums and oil makers in. At some point. I'm too poor to achieve that at the moment. Anyway, back on the farm I had to dig into my fish reserves because Susan wanted 50 fertilizer, which is 50 fish. Luckily for me though, I had been hoarding fish anyway so I managed it pretty easy. Naturally, I rode Sally up to Emerald Farm and dropped the fertilizer into Susan's chest, which completed the quest. Of course, being a Monday night, my ancient fruit wine was ready to be collected, so I gathered it all up and dumped it into the shipping bin. Before bed, however, I prepared my greenhouse for more ancient fruit seeds and crafted a whole bunch of deluxe speed growth so I could speed up the ancient fruit growing. Day 149 started with chopping wheat and lots of ancient fruit. I placed down my deluxe speed growth, turned the ancient fruit into seeds, and finally finished filling the greenhouse. The remaining fruit I put into kegs just for some extra cash. Sally and I then rode to Pierre's where I purchased some blueberry plants, which I then planted back on the farm. I didn't accomplish much for the rest of the day, I kinda just faffed around the farm before heading to bed that night. Although a crop fairy did come overnight, so that was, that was cool. It was day 150 and it was a good day today because my red cabbages were finally ready for harvest. Without delay, I rode Sally as fast as I could over to the community center where I handed in the red cabbage, completing the diet bundle, and finally the community center. It was safe to say I was very happy. Today was also Maru's birthday, so I gave her one of her favorites, a strawberry. Afterwards, I thought I'd better see the inside of Jojo Mart at least once before it gets demolished. I did find Pam giving poor Martin a hard time on the cash register, and then I bought some more summer crop seeds since Pierre was closed today. I spent the rest of the day diving through the musty mines, looking for gold, stone, and anything else I could get my hands on, really. Overnight, I had reached level 10 combat and opted to go with the brute perk, which lets you deal 15% more damage. Day 151 was the summer luau, but before I could be on my way, Gus came over to visit me. He came all this way over to hand me a mini jukebox and a crafting recipe to make another one, which is lovely, thank you Gus. I placed it down in front of my house to show it off. I rode Sally into town and came across a community celebration for the restored community center. I joined the festivities inside and Mayor Lewis presented me with the Stardew Hero Trophy. Morris then came marching in demanding everyone go back to Georgia, so I told Pierre to finish things the old-fashioned way and uh okay remind me never to get on Pierre's bad side anyway from one festivity to the next I headed on down to the beach where I put a truffle into the potluck soup and wowed the governor for the second year in a row Day 152 I woke up to a mailbox full of cooking recipes and after sorting through them I headed on down to Willie's shop. Amongst all the recipes Willie had asked me to come and visit so that's exactly what I did. Upon entering the back room Willie showed me an old boat that needed a bit of love. So he asked me to provide the necessary materials and he'll get to fixing it. Sally and I then headed up to Robin's where I commissioned a big shed upgrade before fighting the wizard up by the railroad in a bit of a huff. He lectured me again about his ex-wife saying he 
had lost his magic ink in her hut somewhere. And that, of course, it was up to me to retrieve said magic ink. To move this thing in the way though, I need a talisman. The wizard suggested Krobus would know, so I guess I'll head there then. But first Susan wanted to show me her big melons. Hey, 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 the ones made with the fertilizer I gave her, thank you very much. I made my way down to the sewers where Krobus opened up the mutant bug lair saying the talisman was in there. One adventure through the lair later and I had my hands on the talisman. So back up at the railroad, I moved the statue and headed into the swamp. What's this? A goblin in my way? No worries, I have some void mayo for you. I got my hands on the magic ink and teleported straight back to the wizard's tower where I handed it over. He rewarded me with the Book of Summoning. Now this is where I can purchase things like Junimo huts, obelisks, and the golden clock. However, I'll come back for them another time because I don't quite have the funds for them at the moment. As if this day wasn't action-packed enough though, I was intrigued to find a warp symbol on the ground to the south of the Cindersat forest. What did I do? I stepped in it, of course. And suddenly I was transported to a secret area of the woods. I found a plaque which read, follow the mushrooms. And then I realized there were mushrooms that littered the paths, offering hidden paths around the forest. After hours of exploring, the night was coming and I was losing time fast. But finally, I found my way down to a Junimo-filled village, who sell incredible things like artifacts, legendary fish, tiny crops, minerals, and lots more. I quickly grabbed a Dwarf Scroll 3 before passing out and vowed to come back another day. Day 153 started with an airy shot of Aurora Vineyard, and I have a feeling my presence will be needed there. But before I could head there, I finally satisfied my lava eels with the dwarf scroll before heading on over to One River Road. Evelyn taught me how to make some cookies, which was very nice, and I handed Alex a birthday gift since it was his birthday today. Over at the museum, I found Martin getting flustered over some books he was looking at. Turns out, Martin was looking through old family trees from the valley because he didn't actually know his own parents, which is really sad. I was there, however, to donate an elvish jewellery which I had found yesterday in the woods. Back on the farm, my melons had grown, so I picked them and put them in my summer crops chest. I popped by Piers and found all the farmers having a cute wee moment together before purchasing some spangle seeds, which I planted back on the farm. That afternoon, I did some decorating by the greenhouse and fluffed around the farm for a while. Since today was a thunderstorm, I used a rain totem to ensure tomorrow was the same, which as you'll see, I do for the next couple of days. Gunther stopped by the farm the morning of day 154 to let me know that all the donations I had made to the museum meant that we were gonna get a large donation and that I would be getting a portion of said donation. Hey, I mean, sounds pretty good to me. Down at Willie's shop, I had everything I needed to repair the boat to Ginger Island, so I handed it over. Now I just need to wait until tomorrow when it's fixed. Back on the farm, I spent the rest of the day mooching around doing some chores, like petting animals, replanting crops that had grown, and watching my lightning rods charge up. Riveting stuff, I know. But overnight, Willie and Robin used the materials I had given them, and they fixed the boat. So on day 155, that is exactly where I headed. I waited patiently for Willie to open his shop, paid for a ticket, and set sail to the Fern Island. Once on the island, I didn't have time to soak in the sights because I had work to do. I met a boy named Leo who seemed quite shy, but if I wanted to speak his language, I'd have to go hunting for golden walnuts. But before I could even start, this happened. Hold on, wait for it. Any second now. Right there. That's the moment I realized I got the living hat. Now for those who haven't played a lot of Stardew before, or don't know the big deal behind this hat, it has a 0.001 chance of dropping when chopping weeds. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a 1 in 100,000 chance. I rest my case. I was very excited. Anyway, after that crazy luck, I got to collecting walnuts. And after a day's work collecting walnuts and opening up other parts of the island, I headed back to the valley where I collected my wine, shipped it off, and headed to bed. Day 156 was another Tuesday, which meant my ancient fruit was awaiting harvest. So to my greenhouse I went where I picked my ancient fruit and shoved them into kegs over at the shed. I then picked some crops that were ready to harvest before riding Sally into town. Also, Sally has been put in charge of the living hat and I think she looks great. I passed by my small farm patch in town where I collected up my now ready to harvest 
with starfruit as they had finished growing. And back home, I put 10 into kegs for Olivia's special quest. I decided to keep the rest just in case I needed them. And as you'll see later on, I'm pretty glad I did. I popped by the desolate Jojo Mart building to find a plaque for the missing bundle. I'll need a few in-game items to complete it, so I'll keep an eye out for them on my adventures. For now though, I took a trip down to Cinder Sap Forest and found a scared looking Jazz lost in the woods. So I took her back to Marnie's. I was here because I wanted to finally visit Aurora Vineyard and see what was up. All I found in the old abandoned house was a single Junimo plaque. Unfortunately for me though, I couldn't understand the writing. So I took off to see the wizard. After confronting Magnus about the scroll, he still couldn't quite decipher it. So he asked for help and another witch came to our aid. Her name was Camilla. She deciphered the scroll, saying there was a young Junimo who inhabits the basement and asks for 200 starfruit. I left thinking, dang, that's a lot of starfruit. It was however getting too late to visit the desert and buy the starfruit seeds I need, so I thought I'd map out the top of the shed, which would make for a perfect place to grow 200 starfruit. I popped six iridium sprinklers down and I headed to bed. Day 157 started out with a bus ride to the desert. I paid Sandy a visit at the Oasis shop and purchased my 200 starfruit seeds. Arriving back in the valley I headed back to grandpa's shed where I got to planting. Since I can only plant 144 crops at a time I'll have to do this in two batches. And after working on my starfruit for so long the day had just kind of rolled on by. I handed Sam a birthday present, said hello to my animal friends and called it in for the night. It was back to Ginger Island on day 158. I spent a bit of time Time collecting more golden walnuts and running through the volcano dungeon. I spent the majority of the day in the dungeon collecting cinder shards, slaying magma sprites and collecting more golden walnuts. And since I was too far deep by the time night rolled around, I ended up passing out there at 2am. Day 159, I woke up on the island but I headed straight back to the valley where I sorted my inventory back into my chests and got ready for another day. Sally and I rode up to Robin's where I handed Demetrius' favourite, a strawberry, over to him for his birthday. And then I caught a ride on Willie's boat right back to Ginger Island. Over on the island farm I set up a normal sprinkler and planted a melon, wheat and a garlic as I need to grow these for the gourmand frog. Look he's a very particular frog. I headed north where I opened up the dig site and bombed this cave to let Professor Snail out. He looks after the island museum so I'm sure I'll be stopping by to see him again. I then cleared out the dig site, collected some more golden walnuts and dropped off some bones to our new friend Professor Snail. And then it was time for your favourite segment of all time and and season two of Panning with Poxiel. If you're new to Panning with Poxiel, the game is very simple. I'm after a certain ring called the Lucky Ring which can be panned up from the dig site river and while wearing the ring the player will be granted with plus one luck. So I spent a while patiently waiting and panning until the unthinkable happened. Holy shit. I'd just like to thank my family, the academy, those who supported me through the hard times when I could never get the ring. I genuinely cannot believe it. I finally got the ring. Day 160, the rain was pouring down, but I was far from a bad mood after yesterday's incredible events. After finishing some chores around the farm, I rode Sally over to the museum where I donated a few artifacts I had found yesterday while clearing out the dig site. And then I was back to the volcano dungeon where I spent a good portion of the day fighting my way through levels of danger, trying my hardest to reach the top of the volcano. And after hours of dodging fireballs and slaying magma sprites, I emerged at the forge. Waiting for me at the top was an adventurer named Lance, who was very impressed with my efforts. Having the forge unlocked is very important as I get into the late game, as the forge allows me to combine rings, enchant tools, and upgrade weapons. I hopped on the boat back home and made my way back to the farm where I headed to bed for a well-deserved rest. Lance paid me a visit the morning of day 161, who handed me his schedule, so if I ever needed to contact him I'd know exactly where to go. And then Lewis showed up soon after, letting me know that there will be a community day on the 22nd of every season. This is where everyone in town hangs out in the community centre for the day. And I definitely won't forget about this. I started my day harvesting some summer spangles, petting the animals and checking on my star fruit up in the shed. Up at Robin's I commissioned an upgrade on one of my soon to be pig barns and headed on over to Clint's. He needed some help gathering 30 gold bars for a project Mayor Lewis once done. So I headed back home, I gathered up 30 gold bars and headed back. I dumped the gold bars and while I was there I dropped off 20 coal and 
120 iridium ore he needed to craft that bomb he asked for all that time ago. That afternoon I passed by the witch's swamp where I caught a few void salmon and ticked off another item I needed for the missing bundle. I then passed by Krobus in the sewers where I purchased a couple of crafting recipes and a cooking recipe. I started day 162 harvesting crops and gifting the dwarf an amethyst since it was his birthday today. I then slapped on some monster musk and ran through the mines slaying void spirits for the rest of the day. Before heading home though I did check into the adventurers guild to see my progress and it was coming along quite nicely. Back on the farm I collected up my ancient fruit and star fruit wine from the shed and dumped the ancient fruit wine into the shipping bin before heading to sleep. Day 163 started off with some exciting news. Rasmodius came by to let me know the Fern Girl Republic Ministry of Magic has expressed their interest in developing my arcane potential and to visit him at my earliest convenience to learn about warp magic. I'll be sure to pop by. But for now I still had work to do. More specifically picking my ancient fruit, shoving them into kegs, and gifting Victor a duck feather for his birthday. While I was there I put the 10 star fruit wine into Olivia's basement bar which completed her special quest. And I was rewarded with 80,000 gold. Now that is a worthwhile special quest. Up at the railway Clint had obviously bombed through the boulder in the way of the summit. So of course I'm gonna go up and snoop around. There wasn't too much up there except for some new forageable flowers. golden rods and thistles. I won't lie though, it did feel a bit weird being up there. So I quickly left and headed on down to the wizard, excited by the prospect of learning warp magic. I started my learning by downing another elixir which offered me the ability to open warp gates. Magnus and I then went through a training montage and I quickly learned to put my abilities into actions. Now that I had mastered the art of opening warp gates, it was time to secure my nexus. I headed over to the backwoods where I met up with the wizard once again and he showed me exactly where my nexus would be stationed. Once inside we used our magic to secure said nexus and I created my first warp gate which led me straight to the wizard's tower. Back in the enchanted grove I was left to my own vices and it was going to be up to me to find and fill my nexus full of other warp gates to many places around the expanded valley. And I was very excited. I also found a new forageable called a dewdrop berry which had grown in the enchanted grove. I had a bit of fun warping back and forth between the wizard's tower and my nexus before finishing up the day and heading back on the farm to do some chores. Day 164 was Willie's birthday, so I started my day riding Sally into town, accepting Gunther's fragments of the past special quest, and gifting Willie a sea cucumber. Sally and I headed north up to Robin's where I commissioned another barn upgrade before slapping on another batch of monster musk and hitting the mines. Gunther's quest tasked me to collect 100 bone fragments, so with some monster musk and the burglar's ring, this was gonna be a piece of cake. By the evening time, not only had I collected all 100 bone fragments, but I also had ticked off the skeleton and monster slayer goal. That night up at the adventurer's guild I created my second warp gate and upon entering the gate I created an area in my nexus that I could use to return to the adventurer's guild at any time. Back on the farm I then created my third warp gate from my farm totem which was great because I thought I'd have to walk to the backwards every time but now I can do it from the comfort of my own home. So before bed I spruced it up with some fences and torches. It was day 165, a good luck day and I thought what better way to spend a good luck day than day down in the skull caverns. I popped by the dwarf to buy some bombs. Down at Sophia's I purchased a bottle of aged blue moon wine which will grant me with plus seven luck and I took off to the caverns. With luck on my side today I made my way down the caverns collecting as much as I possibly could. On floor 100 I found the elusive Mr. Key waiting for me who congratulated me on my efforts and praised me for not using ladders. I received and drank a bottle of Viridium snake milk which will boost my overall HP by 25. And then I passed out on floor 100 and three happy with today's efforts. I checked my haul as soon as I woke up on day 166 which included 150 iridium, two prismatic shards, three iridium bars, and a whole bunch of other goodies. I quickly sorted it back into my chests, gave Sally a cowboy hat I had found yesterday, and donated a couple of things to the museum. I then harvested some crops before spending a good portion of the day knocking down my crop fields. As sad as it was to see them go, I now had the resources to make some upgrades, so it was time to make that happen. I spent the rest of the night planning out the area, but it got too late, so I think I'll have to finish it tomorrow. 
Day 167, I walked down onto the farm, looked at what I had so far, and I got back to work. I placed down my iridium sprinklers, added some lamp posts for light, bought two Junimo huts from the Wizard's Book of Summoning, aligned the area with fences and torches, and I finally had the perfect crop area, which I was honestly very happy with. That afternoon, I was riding through town and found Olivia hosting her banquet, and with my provided cheeses and wine, it was looking like a real hit. I was, however, on my way to Ginger Island. Moments before the banquet, I had just crafted an iridium band, meaning I now have the four rings I wish to combine together to make the ultimate combination. So up at the forge I combined my iridium band with the lucky ring and my slime charmer ring with the burglar's ring. It was safe to say that I was now a happy man. Back in the valley I spent the rest of the night constructing the interior of my slime hutch. This design is pretty standard for me, I do it all the time, but once I'm finished I can see why I do it every time. It's simple, it's classy, and I love it. Day 168 was the final day of summer. I moved some slime eggs I had collected over to the slime hutch and put a couple into incubation before heading up to Robin's, where I commissioned another barn upgrade. That afternoon, I popped by Piers where I purchased a load of grass starter and worked on a path to the slime hutch for the rest of the afternoon. And bada bing bada boom, it was looking pretty nice. I stayed up past my bedtime and headed down to the beach where I watched the moonlight jellies come up to the pier. And I enjoyed this absolute banger of a track once again. Funny number day plus 100 was the first day of fall. Sticking to the theme of each season, I spent the whole day hoeing dirt, watering the ground, and planting as many different types of fall crops as I could, which is pretty much how I spent the whole day. Before bed though, I collected all of my ancient fruit wine from the shed, shoved it into the shipping bin, and headed to bed after a long day of planting crops. The rain was pouring down on day 170. I started my day with some chores around the farm before heading into town with Sally to find Penny. I found her by the museum and gifted her a melon because it was her birthday today. I passed by the special quest board and picked up a quest from Sophia, which tasked me to gather materials for a fairy garden. Which I totally do, I definitely do not completely forget about this and then never do it. Back on the farm, my starfruit had finally grown in the shed so I picked it all and replanted the final batch so I could finally make some progress with Aurora Vineyard. I then picked my ancient fruit in my greenhouse, which was a beautiful sight seeing every single plant ready for harvest. And and I dumped them all onto my kegs before heading back to the Junimo village. That's right, I finally remembered to go back. I conjured up another warp gate while I was there. I stepped through the warp gate, which took me back to my nexus, and I had my fourth warp point up and running. Back in the village, I decided to splash my cash on a whole bunch of different artifacts I hadn't donated to the museum yet, and then I headed back home. Day 171, I started my day with some chores before riding Sally into town. I popped by the museum and donated all the artifacts I had bought yesterday, and then I headed up to Robin's where I commissioned another big barn upgrade. Afterwards, I took a boat trip across the ocean to Ginger Island, as I'm pretty sure my three crops would have grown. Ah, there they are. I showed all three to the Gourmand Frog, who paid a handsome sum of five golden walnuts per crop, which I used to rebuild the island resort. With the debris cleared, I collected some more golden walnuts by the Pirate's Cove before spending the evening clearing my island farm of the debris. I spotted Birdie fishing, as she usually is, and told me about her late husband's lost keepsake. So she gave me a war memento she had found, and hoped that I could retrieve said pendant. I headed back to the valley where I emptied my inventory into my chests, and went to sleep. Most of day one. 172 I spent completing Birdie's quest. I handed the warm memento to Kent, who gave me some gourmet tomato soup. I took the soup to Gus, who traded that with a Stardew Valley Rose. I paid Sandy a visit in the desert, who loved the flower so much, she returned the favour with an advanced TV remote. I took the remote to George, who handed me an Arctic Shard. I paid Rasmodius a visit, who traded the Arctic Shard for a worm. And down at the beach, I handed Willie the worm, who finally gave me the pirate's locket, which I handed back to Birdie on Ginger Island. I was rewarded with the crafting recipe for fairy dust and some more golden walnuts. To finish the day off, I was back at the dig site for another episode of Panning with Poxiel. Hey, don't think just because I got it once, I'm cancelling the remaining episodes. I want to get as many as I can now. Unfortunately, today though, I wasn't able to add another lucky ring to my collection. Aww.
That night, I passed by the pirate's cove, which was full of life. I applied some darts and bit this guy three times in a row. Pretty embarrassing for you, buddy boy. Who gave me some golden walnuts for my skills. I then headed back to the valley and finally to bed. Day 173, I woke up to my Junimos working hard collecting crops. The joys of having Junimo huts on your farm is that you don't have to pick crops. They do it for you. I popped by Pierre's and bought some replacement cranberry seeds, which I planted back on the farm. Today was also Elliot's birthday, so I rode Sally down to the beach where I found him on the pier and I gifted him a duck feather. Back on the farm I did some exterior decorating by planting trees and filling this bare spot with some grass. As for the rest of the day I kind of just fluffed around the farm not really achieving all too much. I started day 174 admiring my crop area. It's so colourful. I paid the sewers a visit, not to visit Krobus this time however, I was here to reset my foraging skills. Since wood wasn't going to be too hard to buy now with all the gold I have, I decided I'll finally change my foraging skills, which will happen overnight. For now though, I was back to Ginger Island where I was making my way through the volcano dungeon, collecting golden walnuts, gathering cinder shards, and collecting anything else I could get my hands on. Back in the valley, I headed to bed where I then changed my foraging skills to gatherer and botanist, meaning anything I forage will automatically be iridium quality and I have a chance to pick up two items from one forage. It was day 175 and I thought I should add some preserved jars closer to my ponds since they were producing quite a lot of row now. I then decided the space around my farmhouse looked a bit bare so I added a pathway with some fences, torches and grass which took up most of the day but I didn't mind because I really like it. Aw, oh, see, Samson loves it. Day 176, I was passing by the special quest board and picked up the mysterious venture quest from Marlin, which would only be revealed if I accepted. So, of course I did, and it turns out he needs a lot of bombs. <laughs> But I think I'll finish that another day as today I was back to the volcano dungeon on Ginger Island. Again I was looking for more cinder shards, golden walnuts and dragon teeth. I did spend the whole day running through the dungeon. It wasn't until later on that night that I travelled back to the valley, collected up my ancient fruit wine, dumped it all into the shipping bin and headed to sleep. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! Day 177 was another Tuesday, so I spent the morning picking ancient fruit and filling my kegs for more wine and more money. I also finally had everything I needed to complete the missing bundle, so I rode Sally over to the rundown Jojo Mart and handed in all the items to the final plaque. The Junimo said his last goodbye and vanished in a flurry of stars. While in town, I consoled Victor about losing a dear animal friend of his before heading up Piers to buy some more fall crop seeds, which I then planted back on the farm. With not too much to do, I decided to call it in for an early night. However, overnight, the Junimos dance for one final time in the Jojen Mart will now be replaced with a movie theatre. Day 178 started with a morning ride to Clint's where I put in my hoe for a gold upgrade, and then I passed by Robin's where I commissioned a second farmhouse upgrade. This would add in a nursery and the option to add in two extra rooms if I so wished. I quickly popped by the summit just in case there were some different forageables for the fall season, however there were not. And then I spent the rest of the afternoon shipping one of everything I had for the shipping collection. That evening, Lewis popped by the farm and offered me a farm extension at the low low price of 250,000 gold. Oh my god bro. Man, land does not come cheap. I said I would and that I'd have to talk to Lewis again to confirm my option, but I don't think there's any time limit, so that's something I'll do later on when I can definitely afford it. Overnight I somehow got level 10 fishing. I'm a little confused because I looked over the footage again and I didn't go fishing today but I mean hey that was the last max player skill I needed so uh I'm, I'm not complaining. It was day 179 and I started my day by making bombs gifting Jody a diamond for her birthday and stashing said bombs into Marlin's chest, which completed his special quest. I wonder why he needed so many bombs. And then I was back to Ginger Island. I found a gem bird and put its gem on the eastern pedestal before heading to the dig site for another episode of Panning with Hoxil. Unfortunately, I couldn't add another lucky ring to the collection today, but I'm certainly determined to get more. Day 180, my Pond of Void Salmon had requested 10 bat wings, so I gave in to their demands and handed them over. I quickly popped on over to the museum where I donated a dino egg my little dino friend had produced, and up at the Adventurer's Guild I found out what all those bombs were for. Turns out a place far away called Castle Village was in need of them, and they were taken away in a blink of an eye. Marlin rewarded me for my 
my efforts with an order ledger, which lets me buy some cool decorations from the Adventurers Guild. I waited around for the guild to open and I had a look through the ledger and it was filled with some pretty cool stuff. I'll have to come back and buy some decorations later. That afternoon I worked on a path that led off the slime hutch path into the secret woods. And you know the drill by now, I placed paths, fences, torches, grass, and by the evening I had a pretty cool looking path which I made sure to keep horse friendly just for Sally. And then I decided to head to bed early. I suddenly awoke on day 181 to a much bigger house. Did that happen while I was sleeping or was, you know what, Never mind. Today was Abigail's birthday, so I waited patiently for Pierre's to open and handed her an amethyst. After purchasing some more fall crop seeds from Pierre, I passed by Robin's where I commissioned the final house upgrade and then I circled back into town to pick up my gold hoe and swapped it out for a gold watering can upgrade. Back on the farm, I finally planted down my seeds replacing all the crops my junimos had picked and I'll be honest I didn't achieve much for the rest of the day so on to day 182 I was back at Pierre's to buy more seeds but not before helping Abigail smoke the first level of Journey of the Prairie King back on the farm I planted down my seeds and decided today would be the perfect day for another episode of Penning with Poxiel Today's episode came with more excitement as, yes, that's right, I added a second lucky ring to my collection. Jody decided to pay me a visit the morning of day 183 to invite me to dinner. They did request I bring a large mouth bass though, but lucky for me I had one already in my chest ready to go, which meant I could spend the morning doing things like chores around the farm, collecting my gold watering can, and giving Sandy a birthday gift. That afternoon I checked up on my star fruit in my shed and they were all ready for harvest, so I collected up all 200 of my star fruit and raced on over to Aurora Vineyard. And upon entering the old abandoned house, I went straight to the plaque and handed over my 200 star fruit. I waited a couple of seconds, but I think I'll have to wait for something to happen overnight. I headed over to Jody's place and spent the night having a lovely dinner full of fried bass before heading home to collect my wine and ship it off. Before bed, I decided to make a whole bunch of deluxe speed grow, which I placed over my soil in the shed, since I'm going to fill this area with ancient fruit tomorrow. And that is exactly what I did the morning of day 184. Actually, today was the Valley Fair, but I think I had more important things to do. So I think I can afford to miss it, just this once. I picked my ancient fruit, spent the morning turning them back into seeds, planted 144 ancient fruit down, and put the remaining fruit into kegs. A job well done, I think. I passed by the special quest board in town and picked up Willie's tropical fish quest before heading back to the farm and to bed. Day 185, I noticed the Junimos had been hard at work, paid by the kindness of my heart and not minimum wage, so I purchased some cranberry seeds, which I planted back on the farm. I rode Sally over to Aurora Vineyards where something magical had happened, and I was introduced to this adorable looking guy whose name was Apples. Aww. So cute. He thanked me for the star fruit and headed back to his village for the day. Although nothing much had changed on the farm, I had made a new friend. Maybe the real treasure is the friends we make along the way. Anyway, I spent the afternoon painting my farmhouse, stable, coop, and barn. I was there for a while, but I was pretty happy with the final colours. Before I left, I did commission the first deluxe upgrade on one of my barns. With some time left in the day, I ran a rabbit's foot over to the delivery truck driver, who in return handed me a special charm, which permanently increases my daily luck. <laughs> I headed into the movie theatre where I found Claire and Martin working at the till. So despite the removal of Jojo Mart, I was happy to see them. Up at the bathhouse, I followed another secret note and fished up a lost necklace which belongs to Caroline. Now you can hand it to Abigail and get more friendship points, but after what happened last series, I gave it to Caroline, just out of spite. After which I headed home and finally to sleep. It was day 186 and it was Marty's birthday. So Sally and I rode down to the ranch where I gave her a diamond. I then paid a visit to my my slime hutch which was now very full of slimes before popping by Aurora Vineyard again. Apples was nowhere to be found though so back I went to the farm where I spent a while trying to fix the grass clipping through the stable in the house. Four fences looked kind of weird so I did some problem solving, got a decoration from the ledger and placed it down. Now you can barely see it and no grass will grow there meaning no more clipping grass. And with that success I decided to go to bed. Overnight however Fred the sheep gave birth and I called the baby Ted, very own brand. I know. I started day 187 with a trip to Aurora Vineyard, and Apples was finally back from his trip to the Junimo village. With Apples back, I could now open a warp gate to the basement, and once I walked through, I solidified 
another warp location in my nexus. Back in the forest a hidden pathway had opened and I followed it to this magical looking spring. I got to talking with these creatures I couldn't quite see, but soon I found out they were forest sprites and I was standing in front of Sprite Spring. They allowed me to cross the spring where I set up a warp gate. I hurried back to my nexus, took the warp gate back to the spring and was met with a small field of forageable flowers. The sprites mention rare forageables sometimes pop up, so I'll have to make coming here a habit. For the rest of the day, Sally and I ventured around the valley foraging before calling it in for an early night. Day 188, I started my day foraging down at the beach before taking the ferry across to Ginger Island. I thought what better time to try and catch some tropical fish and complete Willy's quest. Well, it turns out the answer to that was five days ago because I had a horrible time trying to catch anything in the river. I then tried out in the ocean, and I'll be honest, I caught some really cool new fish, but it just wasn't happening. It was getting close to evening when I called it quits and I said to myself, I'll try again another time. However, back at the farm, Camilla came knocking on my door. Now she was the one who helped me with the Junimo writing all that time ago. Telling me there was some important business to attend to, she teleported us once again and we were now standing upon a tall tower. She mentioned we were now in the continent of Glodora, and below us lay the magical wasteland called the Crimson Badlands. Camilla allowed me to place a warp gate here so I could return and try my luck scaring the Badlands at any time. She teleported us back to the farm and left once again. I headed to bed excited to return to Glodora and uncover what secrets lay hidden beneath the Badlands. It was Robin's birthday on day 189, so before embarking on an adventure, I gifted her some goat cheese. I then entered my nexus and took the warp gate back to Glodora. Before heading out, I met with Alicia and a guy named Isaac. I don't know about Isaac, he seems a bit shady that one. Anyway, he showed me a map of the Badlands, which I had to memorize since I don't have my own map. And then I entered into the hellscape. I ventured across the Badlands, picking up void souls and fighting my way through hordes of powerful enemies. After a while, of total nothing, I found my way up to a castle. However, magical protection on the outside meant I couldn't get through. So I fought my way south where I came across an iridium filled canyon. I grabbed as much as I could but I quickly found out that these enemies are endless. So I hurried out of there before things got desperate. It was getting late and I was constantly being swarmed by enemies so I tried one more attempt to open the castle with anything I had found on my adventure but it was no use. So I rushed back to the entrance of the Badlands through the warp gate and all the way back home just in the nick of time. Day 190, my curiosity got the better of me. I was determined to make it through the castle and reach safety, so back out I went to the Badlands once again. From my adventures yesterday, I figured the graveyard full of bones may have something there that will help me open the gate, and then I saw it. Holy Jesus, what is that? What the fuck is that? A void serpent, five times the size of my own body, was now chasing me down. The damage he dealt was ruthless, and I didn't stand a chance. I was dead in seconds. Camilla thankfully intervened and kept me alive, but I had no health or energy left, so I vowed to come back another day and finish the job. In a strange turn of extremes, I decided to join everyone in the community center for community day. After almost dying, I think I needed it. That night, I collected up my ancient fruit wine, shipped it off, and headed to bed. Day 191 was another Tuesday, so I fell back to routine and picked my ancient fruit before kegging them up at the shed. I then swung by Robins, who I caught just before she headed out to her workout group, and that was for another deluxe barn upgrade. Back on the farm, I had a bit of fun playing around with my slimes since my slime charmer ring keeps me safe from their damage. And then I made my way back through my own nexus to get to the adventurer's guild where I handed Marlin a gift. Down in the saloon, I stocked up on some more salads since I was running low before heading to bed early. It was day 192 and I figured I would go visit the Sprite Spring. So through my nexus I went and I picked some beautiful flowers while I was there. Today was also George's birthday so I handed him one of his favorites, a leek. On my way home, I popped by Piers to buy some seeds, and back home I filled up an empty section with more amaranth. My void salmon were feeling a little bougie today because they asked for a diamond, but I had saved up lots from my crystallarium, so I didn't mind. That afternoon I decided to visit the secret woods where I got some more hardwood and did a bit of foraging. With not much to do, I just headed home and to sleep early again. The rain was pouring down on day 193, and I started my day down at Marnie's where I got some ornamental hay bales. I circled around to Piers where I bought some grass, and back on the farm I placed down my hay bales and filled the field back up with grass. Ah, that's much better. I was clearly in a decorative mood today as I continued to decorate around the path by the bridge. I added some grass in the back, some stone pathways to add some texture, and finally these cool lamps I picked up from the guild's ledger book. 
I'm sure I'll add some more stuff later, but for now I was pretty happy with how it looked. Day 194 was a Skull Cavern kind of day. I spent the whole day diving through the caverns, ending up with a whopping 216 Iridium Ore, 5 Prismatic Shards, and a whole bunch of other goodies before passing out at 2am. I spent day 195 commissioning another barn upgrade from Robin, doing chores on the farm, and giving apples a star fruit for a gift. However, I did stay up late tonight, as it was the Spirit's Eve festival, and because this is expanded, the maze is different once again from last year's. Now I would like to play this out in real time, but we'd be here for another 10 minutes, so here's me getting the golden pumpkin. So yeah, just, just pretend this took like 2 minutes, and then we'll be fine. Day 196 was the final day of the fall season, and also Susan's birthday. Day. So Sally and I rode up to Emerald Farm where I made good use of that golden pumpkin I got last night and I gifted it to her. I passed by my friend Gunther in the museum to donate another artifact before heading on over to Ginger Island. I had brought a whole bunch of pathways with me and that was so I could map out where I wanted my iridium sprinklers to go. I plan on filling out this farm full of ancient fruit, but maybe I'll save that for the next 300 days. By the evening time I had finished upsetting the borders within my island farm and decided to head back home and finally to bed. Day 197 was the first day of winter. I got to planting some winter seeds, since there aren't a lot of winter crop options. Once the seeds were down and the farm chores were done, I headed straight back to Ginger Island. It's too cold in the valley. When I arrived back at the island farm, however, it was full of weeds again. You know, not much pisses me off in this game, but this certainly does. I placed down my iridium sprinklers and left without looking back. Back in the valley, I headed on down to the sewers where I gave Krobus a big old pumpkin for his birthday, before cracking open some golden coconuts over at Clint's. Back home that evening, I collected my ancient fruit wine as usual, and shipped it all off before hitting the hay. Day 198, I was following routine once again, picking my ancient fruit and shoving them into kegs, but I didn't mind because my wallet was feeling pretty heavy. Because it was full of gold, get it? Anyway, up at Robin's, I commissioned the final deluxe barn upgrade for my pigs. I would like to formally apologize for not getting the pigs in this 200 days. However, they will be bored in the next 300 days, and I will still be naming them after some of you watching right now from the first 100 days. That I can promise. But for now, I did some foraging down at the beach before turning in at 3 p.m. Yep, I think you can tell I'm ready for day 200. Day 199 was Linus's birthday, so I took a trip out to the desert where I collected some cactus fruit and coconuts before giving Linus a coconut back in the valley, after which I headed to sleep again at 12 p.m. And finally, day 200. As is tradition in all of my 100 days videos, on the final day I take some time to soak in the bathhouse spa where I reflect on the past 100 days and just relax. And after everything that had happened, I was definitely in need of a spa day. And there you have it, 200 days in Stardew Valley expanded. I managed to get a screenshot of the farm during the final days of fall, and this is what it looks like so far. I'm so happy we got to see more of the expanded content this time, and I'm excited to see what else we can discover. So if you did enjoy the video and want to support me, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel so I know you want to see the next 300 days of Stardew Valley expanded. If you have made it this far, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching all the way. You're all wonderful people, so have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.